how to use mock-ups in model structure building projects, and some exciting news on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi everybody, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and today I want to talk to you about using mock-ups in structure building projects. When a person begins in this hobby, they usually begin with something like a simple loop of track, maybe an industrial siding or two, some very basic scenery, and a few structures that they either bought ready to run or built from kits. This basic level of model railroading can be fun for a while, but eventually most people get bored and either pack it all up in a box and stick it in the garage, or they begin looking for ways to expand. As we expand our model railroad empires, it's natural for us to turn to prototype real railroads to see what they look like. Whether we become diehard prototype modelers or complete freelancers, or like most of us, something in between, at some point we see something on a real railroad that we want to reproduce on our layout. That's when things can become complicated, because it's rare that we find a model kit that is an exact replica of exactly the building that we want to build. Sometimes we can find something close, but very often there just isn't anything that meets our standard of what is close enough. This frustration is multiplied significantly if you model in anything other than HO. N scale and O scale have less to offer, less variety, and less common scales have even less than that. If your drive for realism is strong enough, at some point you begin to think about scratch building and kit bashing. But the idea of cutting up a kit or building something from blank styrene or wood can be daunting to a lot of people, especially new modelers and people with less experience in building. I understand that feeling. I felt that once myself. Well, I want to encourage you today because kit bashing and scratch building are not only doable, but they can be a lot of fun. Your first attempt may not any, win any awards, but that's okay. This is a hobby. It's an opportunity for us to learn and to progress, and that's an important part of the hobby. I want to help those of you who may want be just starting in kit bashing or scratch building or may even just be thinking about trying it for the first time. I'm going to dedicate a significant portion of my Tuesday modeling segments over the next few months to the topic of scratch building and kit bashing. I'm going to share with you some principles that will help you in the building and in the planning stages of these projects. Things like how to get dimensions from just a couple of photographs and how to turn those dimensions into a real scratch built or, or kit bashed uh, structure for your layout. Along the way, you're going to learn some techniques that will be helpful to your success in these buildings and some tools that you may want to invest in as you go. Today, I'm going to begin by talking about mock-ups, how to make them, and why they are very important, especially when you're kit bashing or when you're building a scratch-built project. If you watched my recent series on scratch building Baron Brothers Farm and Garden, you saw the mock-up that I first built for that project and how I used it as a guide throughout the project. When you build a structure kit, you begin with a set of instructions, but with a kit bash or a scratch build, you don't have that. So where do you start? You can either start by drawing a detailed set of plans on paper, essentially your own instruction sheet, or by building a mock-up, or maybe both. I don't always draw plans on paper, but I always build mock-ups whenever I'm kit bashing or scratch building. Today I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to show you how. Before we get to that, I need to make an important announcement. Last weekend was a very exciting time for me as a new YouTube creator because I officially surpassed the 100 subscriber and 1,000 views mark. That is a great feeling after only six weeks on YouTube and less than a dozen videos that I have produced. And it wouldn't be possible without of all of you who have subscribed, watched, liked, shared, and commented on my videos. I appreciate you, I appreciate the way that you keep coming back and the way that you've given me such great feedback. I hope that you will keep tuning in and sharing with your fellow model railroaders through social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr, Instagram, as well as on model railroad forums that you may participate in. In light of this milestone for me personally, I want to recognize a couple of people. 
First, I want to give a shout out to my 100th subscriber, which was Eagle Valley Model Railroad. Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you. And I want to encourage you all to check out his channel and subscribe to him. He's making some nice videos as he's chronicling the build of his own HO scale layout. You'll want to go check that out. I'm going to provide a link to his channel in the credits of this video and also in the description below. I also want to give a shout out to Eric Hall and his channel, the Institute for Model Railroad Operations, or IMRRO.com. Eric and his Big Build Contest version 2 helped to inspire me to start this channel, which I had considered but put off for over a year. Last week, he gave Ron's Trains and Things a wonderful review on one of his videos and a plug which gave me a real boost. Eric, thank you. I appreciate it so much. You the man. And if, if um, you haven't already, I think you should go check out Eric's channel and subscribe to him as well. Again, I'll provide a link to his channel in the credits and in the description below. I have some other good news to share with you, but I'm going to save that until the end of the video, so you'll want to keep watching and see what recently arrived and what is coming soon on Ron's Trains and Things. Well, that is way too much talk for this intro, so let's get down to business and talk about building structure mock-ups. First, let me show you a couple of mock-ups that I have on my layout currently and tell you why I think mock-ups are so important. Here is a mock-up of Midwestern Mud Services, an oil field service and supply company in Bowie, Texas. As you can see, the industry sits on the very end of the upper deck of my layout, just where the main line enters the helix. I have limited space for this structure, which is one reason why mock-ups are so important. You want to be sure that a structure fits properly into the space, that it's well proportioned, and that it looks correct and prototypical in the space that you have before you start cutting styrene or wood or kit pieces. On my Baron Brothers project, I rebuilt that mock-up three times before I was happy with how it fit into the space, and I was really glad I did because it saved me a lot of time and a lot of money in scratch building supplies. The mock-up also helps us to see how the structure is going to work visually into our layout. And when it comes down to it, the real measure of success for any structure building project is does it look right on the layout? Mock-ups help you achieve that goal. Here is another mock-up that I have made for a different purpose. This is the historic Holt Hotel in downtown Wichita Falls, Texas, which I am kit bashing as a low relief background structure. This mock-up is a little different because it's made specifically for a kit bashing project, but I'll tell you more about that a little later. Right now, let me show you how I made both of these structures. For any kit bashed or scratch built structure, I start with reference photos. Here is a photo of Midwestern Mud Services that I'm using in my building project. Photos like this help me to get the dimensions and the overall look of the building right from the planning and mock-up stages. With almost every building, there will be some selective compression and modification. Reference photos help you decide where to shrink, what to leave out, and what definitely must be included in your model. Depending on what you are modeling, there are a number of sources you can use to gather reference photos. Of course, if you have access to the structure itself, you can go and take some photos and some measurements and get actual information right from the source. If you're too far from the structure to photograph it yourself, Google Maps and Google Earth are great sources of reference photos. With their Street View feature, you can get photographs of buildings almost anywhere from almost any angle at which it can be viewed from a street. If you're modeling an historic structure that is no longer standing, your task may be a little more difficult. Internet searches often can provide at least some photographs of a building, as can books at a local library or archive. It may take a little bit of legwork, but diligence pays off in this area, and once you've gathered some reference photos, you can get the basic dimensions of your structure and you can get ready to build. In a later video, I will show you exactly how to gather dimensions from photos to apply to model building, so be sure and watch for that. Now what you need are some materials. My favorite material for building mock-ups is thin corrugated cardboard. You can use thicker corrugated cardboard like this that you get from the sides of boxes, but it is pretty thick, it is very difficult to cut, and it's a little unwieldy in building. You also could use poster board, but it is so thin and flimsy that it doesn't really stand up to uh, the, the kind of rigidity that you need in a uh, mock-up structure. 
I prefer to find corrugated cardboard that is thin, easier to cut, and makes nice walls. It's not, this is not much different than the thickness of the styrene that I'll be using to build this structure itself. Now, as you build some mock-ups over time, you will learn to spot the kind of cardboard that you like, the right thickness and weight very quickly, and you will learn to latch on to it whenever you see it. For a scratch build, I begin by drawing out the walls of the structure on the cardboard using a scale ruler to be sure that the dimensions are correct. As you build your mock-up, you'll notice how the walls fit together, which walls should go inside the corners and which ones should go outside, exactly how the roof fits best. Essentially, use the mock-up building as a practice run at building the structure itself. I draw key details like these doors and windows on the cardboard, not being concerned to draw them perfectly, but trying to get their dimensions right so I can get a sense of how they'll look in the space and on the model. Also, the more accurate you are with a mock-up, the better it is uh, to serve you as a reference whenever you go to build your final structure. When the walls are prepared, I simply glue them together with simple white glue, and when it's dry, I fit it into the space on the layout to evaluate what it looks like and what I should change. Minor changes can simply be made when you transition to building your actual structure, but as I stated earlier, if I really don't like the way a mock-up looks in the space, I will often rework part or rebuild it entirely until I am happy with it. The Holt Motel mock-up I showed you earlier is different in that it is a mock-up for a kit-bashed structure. Using this reference photo, I realized that the DPM's Hilltown Hotel kit looked very similar, but was way too small to be an accurate representation of the hotel that I wanted to model. I needed to find a way to kit bash this kit to make it more like the actual structure that I wanted to make. So I took the kit, put it on a photocopy machine, and made photocopies of the actual pieces with the detail side down. I made several copies so that I could see how I could fit them together to, to make them work to build a larger building. Using these photocopies, I could then cut them in the places that I would expect to cut the structure and fit them together, gluing them to a piece of foam core in order to see how they would fit together in the structure. Now, if you noticed in this reference photo, you'll see that there is an unusual uh, look to the top two stories of this building. Some historic photos show me that these two stories were added much later than the original building was built and thus the different look. I plan to use modular brick walls in order to build those two stories on this building. They're not part of this mock-up yet. This mock-up was specifically made to help me see how I could cut and splice together the DPM uh, Hilltown Hotel module pieces in order to construct this part of the structure. It gives me a sense of the size, the space, the overall look of the building, and it shows me exactly how I need to cut the pieces before I put a razor saw to any of them. So as you see, photocopying parts of a kit is a great way to play with the cutting, the rearranging, the adding of material, and modifying them to get the final results that you want out of your kit-bashed structure. Mockups can be a tremendous help in structure building, and if you lack confidence to try scratch building or kit bashing, mockups can be just the way to build the confidence you need at only the cost of a few pieces of cardboard, a few sheets of photocopy paper, and a little bit of your time. I hope you'll give it a try, and I know that you'll be glad that you did. If you've been putting off your first scratch build or kit bash, or if you found yourself frustrated in trying to build, then tell me about your frustrations and your concerns in the comment section down at the bottom of the page. I want to know how I can best help you through my future videos. Help me help you by asking your questions and telling me about the things that would be helpful for you to learn about on Ron's Trains and Things. Now, before I go, I told you I had some other good news to share with you, and here it is. Look at what arrived at my house just a few days ago. These are the materials for my next big scratch building project, which I'll be showing you step by step in an upcoming series of videos. I'm not quite ready to show you exactly what that structure is yet, but I will say this, it is the most complicated scratch building structure I've ever attempted. 
I'm going to be trying some techniques for the very first time, so we're going to be learning together, and I'll be showing you the whole project uh, on uh, my videos on Ron's Trains and Things. So stay tuned, because I know that you will enjoy this project. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. Be sure to leave a comment or a question in the comment section at the bottom of the page. One of my favorite parts about sharing videos on YouTube is the interaction that I get to have between people who comment on them. Also, uh, take a moment to look at the expanded description just below this channel where you'll find those, those links to Eagle Mountain uh, Model Railroad, to Eric Hall's channel, IMRRO.com, as well as information about my layout, the Texas, Colorado, and Western, and the Facebook page that I have dedicated to it. You can also see there how you can support Ron's Trains and Things if you would like to do that through PayPal Me or Patreon. But if you find these videos helpful, the best thing you could do is share them with others. Use your social media like Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, or whatever model railroad uh, forums that you may participate in and share them with others so that they can find these videos and they can appreciate them as well. Again, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support of Ron's Trains and Things. Thank you for your subscriptions, your likes, your kind words. And that's all for today, but join me again soon on Ron's Trains and Things, and I'll see you then.